Hi, Daniel here. I was asked by Mark in one of the comments how to install my BB using Nginx. And I thought I'd put together a little tutorial video showing how you create the server, install all the dependencies, and then get my BB working. The only thing it doesn't include is how to do HTTPS. I have another video on how to get HTTPS working. So let's jump straight in. The first thing I'm going to do is build a server. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to choose a, the smallest server possible. And I'm going to use Ubuntu 20.04, which is the latest LTS, or the long-term supported system. Uh, I'm going to put it in the UK. I'm going to turn on monitoring. And I'm just going to add my SSH keys to the server as they get built. And I'm just going to call this example.ofdan.com. And that's it. I'm just going to let DigitalOcean build the server for me. Once it's been created, I'll, I'll connect to it and I'll install Nginx and MySQL and PHP. I'm also going to assign it the floating IP address so I don't need to update any, any DNS. It's just a good way of keeping the same IP address regardless of which server you've got. So let's connect to the server. We just need to confirm that this is the correct server. If you're connecting to a server for the first time, then you will get this. So we will just say yes. If it changes again and you don't realize it, then it could be that somebody's sitting in between your connection and trying to read your data, but it's unlikely. It's more likely that you've you've changed the host keys, the, the SSH host keys, or you've recreated the server. So the first thing I'm going to do is do an apt upgrade. But to do that, we need to do an apt update as well. So I'm just going to chain apt update and upgrade together. And because we're going to install my BAB, I know that we're going to need MySQL, Nginx, and PHP. Uh, I'm going to install PHP FPM and PHP CLI rather than just PHP because I think that comes with something else. I think it tries to install Apache last time I did it. Yeah. MySQL server. So we're getting MySQL 8 and PHP 7.4. You can install repositories for all these so you can get like the latest version of MySQL and the latest version of Nginx. This is something I'll cover in another video if necessary. Now that we've got the system software installed, we need to set up the user that's going to run the website because I really do not want to run the website as root because bad things. First command I'm running is user add. And what we're doing is we're creating the user. But the first thing I'm passing is the user folder home or the home directory. I'm then giving it a group, uh, confirming I want it to make, uh, be made, and I'm giving it a shell of bin bash. And finally, a username. So if we change into that directory, it will exist. And it's got all the default files that would come with a new user. Next thing I'm doing is I'm just setting the password to password. This is needed for changing users. You should pick a random password rather than the word password if your system allows logging in by password. Because my system's locked down to SSH keys, no one will be ever able to enter the word password. So that's all I need to do to create the user. To change from root into this user, all I need to do is su and then the username. 
and that will drop us straight into the user's home folder. And to install your software, in this case, MyBB, we need to get the download link. And here's one I've got earlier. And we'll need to unzip that. Oh, let's go back and install that. So now zip is installed, we'll be able to run that unzip command. And there we go. So what that's given us is two directories, documentation, which it'll probably be easier if you download it to your local machine to read, and an upload directory, which actually is your web files. So I'm rather than just sticking all the web files in the root user, in the root of the user, where people could accidentally serve hidden files that you shouldn't be able to serve. I'm going to just keep it in this folder, but I'm just going to name it something else that's a bit more friendly. Um, I tend to use either www or htdocs. Let's go with www. And I'm just going to tidy up by removing that uh, download. And I'm also going to remove the documentation because I don't need it. Not on the server anyway. So when you're done, you should end up with something like this. Now that we've got the web files, we need to set up the web server to actually serve this. So if we log out, why don't we now create the database and the user to go with it? And because we're on the server, we can just type MySQL because the permissions are set up this way. You may want to make this a bit more secure, but it's beyond the scope of this video. So what I want to do is type create database and I'm just going to call mine BB my BB and every command in MySQL you need to end with a semicolon great so we have a database we now need to create the user to go along with this we're using localhost because the user is always going to be connecting from localhost we could put a star there or we could pin it to a particular host name that they're coming from if the connection's always remote. And we need to give it a password. Now I'm using secure password as my password and it is far from secure, uh, mostly because if you watch the video, you know what it is, but it's not gonna stay that. But for the simplicity of this video, this password it's just easy to see and type in. So that's the user and the database, but we now need to tell MySQL that they've got permission. That user has got permission to connect to that database. So we'll use grant for that. So we're gonna give it every permission. We could limit that to say select if we wanted to. For this purposes, I'm just gonna use uh, all permissions because it will make it a lot simpler. And we also need to specify what tables within the database this user can access. And I am using star because let the user access everything. And this is the user. And again, we're going to do localhost and semicolon. And whenever you change any permissions in MySQL users uh, using this method, you do need to flush the permissions. This just means save the permissions to disk and then make them the current. Because otherwise MySQL will have cached a copy of the what's already there and you'll, you'll have mysterious errors like the new password wouldn't work. And then when you're done, you can just type quit. And that is our database and user created. Just remember, remember the password that you've used. You won't be able to find it again because MySQL will have hashed it. So we have the web files installed. We have created our database and user. What else do we need? Well, we need to configure Nginx so that it points to this new site. So let's have a look at that. By default, and I've got it set up on example.ofdan.com. This is your, your welcome screen. So that's not what we want. So let's go into Nginx and have a look at the config. And by default, all the config lives in sites enabled. 
Now, it is in sites enabled, but it's actually in sites available. And then there's just a, a shortcut or a link that connects the two. So if I was to edit default, then I would be editing the sites available default. But what I can do is I can remove this shortcut, this link, and then I can create my own version. That way, if I want to refer to the old default file, I can. I mean, my preference would be to actually create these files in sites available and then sim link them over. So let's recreate this. So we're telling it where the file is. And by default, if I hit enter, it will just pick the same name again, or we can specify the file name here. So let's go into default. And let's tidy this up a little bit. I would suggest reading a lot of these comments because it's going to help you. But for the purposes of this, I don't need most of this. And we installed it in my BB www. We don't need that, but we do need to say that it can be an index.php. Uh, underscore and server name is sort of like a catch-all. So it's up to you. Um, what we can do is type in the actual domain name directly there. Uh, you can also have multiple if you want. The best way, if you want the website to work on one canonical domain name, is to specify additional server blocks that do the redirect and not complicate this server block that does the hosting of this website. Uh, try files, we'll just get Nginx to try different files if the file doesn't exist on the file system. By default, dollar uh, $URI will contain some file, and if it doesn't work, then it will just try the default for that URL, which is what the slash is. So URI slash is if the file doesn't work, but is a folder, so it will try the files above in the index. With that slash, it's going to then try the uh, index.php. And finally, it will just give up and return a 404. Now, we do want this block. And we've installed PHP, and we do want it to do it via PHP FPM. And you may want this block. I think I did see a .ht access inside the script. I think they're just generic ones that they're not. They're just examples. But it's always worth having in there, even though this isn't an Apache system. So let's give that a go. And then what we need to do is reload Nginx. Anytime you do config changes, you need to reload Nginx. If it doesn't work for some reason, you should get an error here, or you can type nginx dash t, and that would just, that's test mode basically. So if we restart this, there we go. We've got my BB. And let's go through and sort of see if we hit the requirements. And there we go, we've got a sea of red nothing is set up and i'm not surprised by that because we haven't done any real config with php so let's go back to the terminal now the first thing i've noticed is there's no database well there is a database but when we installed the database we didn't tell php we wanted to install the database component so we can do that very simply by doing apt install PHP hyphen MySQL. And if we do that, there we go. First one down. Okay, so PHP does not have XML installed. So it's the same thing as before. We need to install the PHP XML module. So config, settings, cache directory, uploads directory, 
and another uploads directory are not writable. A lot of the times people just tell you to just change the permissions. I'm not a 100% fan of that because that allows any user to so then put stuff there. So I don't want to make it world writable. Not if we can avoid it. So the way around this is by changing the actual PHP FPM process. So let's go into PHP. Pools are individual FPM processes for a particular website. So you can see here, these are the www pool, and that is the default one that comes with PHP. And with www, we can see it here. If you had more than one website running on a server, then you'd have multiple pools, or you'd group them up for different functionality. But for this purposes, we're just having a single pool. So let's have a look at the config. Now, PHP pool config is really good, uh, well documented, but we need to tell the PHP pool to run as a different user because the www data group, which is the Nginx group, doesn't have file permissions. And we just need to change this to the user that we created. In the Nginx config, we had the pass directive, and in here is where we specify it. So that is the file that needs to match the Nginx config. And I know that the default happened to be correct, but if you had more than one uh, PHP pool, then you would need to change this because both pools can't write to the same file. And as we've made a change to this, we need to save it, and we also need to restart PHP. Whilst we're here, there is another file that you'll probably have to change, and this is the PHP ini. And in here, that I mean, there's absolutely loads of settings, but there's two that you'll probably want to change if you want to upload files to your website. And that is upload max uh, file size. So at the moment, it's set to just two megabytes you probably want to increase this. And the other config variable that goes hand in hand with this is the post max size. Because if the post max size isn't big enough, then it doesn't matter what your your upload max file size is set to. So this kind of has to be a bit bigger to allow for any extra data you want to send. So we could send it, uh, set this to 25 megabytes. And we save that. Uh, also, if you do change the PHP ini, you do need to restart PHP again. What has gone on here? Have we broken PHP FPM? Okay. Ah, when we created the user, I forgot we used users, not uh, my BB. If we didn't specify a users group, then it would have defaulted to the username. So let's quickly change that. And because PHP FPM isn't started at the moment, we just need to start it. Great, so let's just double check the permissions again. We'll resend that form. Perfect. We have now fixed all the issues. We now need to hook up the database credentials. So the user I created was mybb, and I used a secure password, and the database was mybb. Table prefix is an interesting one. It allows you to store more than one instance of something in the same database, but it also makes it harder for script kiddies to attack your site. What they have to do is figure out what you've prefixed your tables with before they can do anything. And that just makes it a lot harder for them to figure out. It's not impossible, but it just is harder, especially if they're doing it blind. So you could just have what you like here 
the only thing you can't do is change it once you've created it because otherwise you the installation would never be able to find your data so there we go it's created all the tables yeah let's do next creating some basic data okay so so the theme's been set so let's move on and this is just some customization around your website so let's just enter an email address here and we just need to create our admin user so I'm just going to let it choose whatever it wants And there we go, my BB is installed. So let's have a look at the admin control panel. Uh, see with our username and password. I was trying to figure out how to turn on caching in my BB, but I think it's enabled by default. And it looks like you need to go into the file system itself to be able to add caching things like memcache or Redis. So let's have a look. Okay, in the ink folder, there is a config. And obviously we see our database details. And there we go. So let's have a look. They got Redis uh, and memcache or memcache D. So obviously we want Redis, we'll have to do that. Not that we've got it installed at the moment. And these are the variables that control where your memcache server is or your Redis server. Let's save that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install Redis. So apt installed Redis. Um, don't forget we're gonna also need the PHP module to go with it. Excellent. And we're going to tools and maintenance, the cache manager. Now, whenever you change your cache system, you need to rebuild it. Just so it's, it saves everything to the new cache system. And that's it. There is one other thing that I did notice. Where did I see it? Is this is a search engine friendly URLs. So at the moment it's trying to figure out whether to use search engine, search engine friendly URLs. So if I was to go to the forum, so what the SEO settings refer to is the URLs when you create your forum or the, all the links within the forum. So I don't know if you can see this, but when I click on a URL, it goes to forum display.php and then the ID of the forum. It's not great. But if we were to turn on the SEO friendly URLs, then they would change from this .php file to become forum hyphen one. So how do we turn that on? Well, luckily we already have the information and it's inside the project. So if we have a quick look at the file, uh, my BB wwwht access nginx. And in here are a load of redirect rules. So if the web server sent in this uh, forum URL, it would rewrite it behind the scenes. So this forum hyphen, say one, would be redirected to forum display.php. And this is perfect. So what we're just going to do is going to copy and paste all these lines. And before I do, I'm also going to change them to include an extra tab so that when I paste it into mine, it's going to look slightly different. And we just need to paste this in. And we can just do it here above the location slash. There we go. 
this just so it matches the rest of the config. Uh, we save that and again reload nginx service nginx reload. That way we can we can turn it on. We say enabled. Save that. Reload. There we go. You can see this uh, new SEO friendly URL. I wouldn't recommend messing with this setting once you've got an established website unless you know what you're doing. But when you're starting out, it's a great thing to turn on if you can. I hope that answers all your questions about installing MyBB using Nginx and enabling things like cache. I'll see you in the next video.